Great. So now I could do the freaking damn thing on YouTube on the Circle's Edge Thanksgiving turkey roast for the festivities of Bickety Bop. <clears throat> and at this point, let's set up. <clears throat> Just so, so okay. Can you hear me? Now I know how to do this properly. Oh, Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, there we go. Five hundred per apartment. That's twice as big. Oh, look at kitty cat. So stupid thing. Oh. All right, so finally the stupid thing is working. Uh oh. And this took me only three billion hours. It's now eight forty five PM. <sighs> And there's a way to see how my hair looks. All right, so finally. And I see I have a piece of lint in my hair. Oh. And it took me only three billion hours. It's now 8.45. Oh my gosh. With that and said, I guess I'm now going to try to finally Give the stupid latest garage update and finally season the stupid turkey that I got. Thank you, Turkey, from Paul Hacking and the, the um our group, <coughs> you know, facilitator facilitator. And here's a turkey. It's a 13-pound turkey. Who got the way thing? Okay. And I have some potatoes. And the onions, and I'm gonna cut up one more onion. What the hell is this shit in here? Because what happened was Tim, who was impatient, likes to eat, and thinks I have nothing to do along with him, expected me to be able to stop, drop, and do everything at once. I literally went to Zumba today. I'm cutting that little piece off. What the hell? I cut off, and the son of a bitch went in there. No, you didn't, you son of a bitch. I don't even know where the damn thing went. I'm done. I'm done. I'm really just coming from Zumba. I'm so fat now to shave. I'm exhausted all the time. But with that said, I'm going to cut this one onion up here with my piss poor knife skills that I'm going to season. Oh, God. Well, this knife is dull. I need to call a knife doctor because it shouldn't take like this much effort. Pop up a onion. Oh my God. And you wonder why I don't want to prep. I don't mind seasoning, but I do mind prepping. And onion chopping is prepping. And speaking of that, I have peppers and other stuff I'm going to add. So, versus looking at my ugly elbows, let's look at me season the turkey. And they're going to have to wait because. Um, Literally just started over here, so too bad, so sad. They couldn't wait to leave a message. <sighs> Begin to. And so now I'm gonna look for the peppers I have in the refrigerator, as well as some stock. Okay. And actually, Oh, 
instead of using water, I'm gonna use this turkey gravy, roasted turkey gravy. These peppers. So really good. Look how bad this knife is. Oh my God. So, I think I only, because we used one and a half onions. They were big onions, so. I'm gonna just use some of these peppers. My knife skills are already bad. And they, you gotta deal with that, no. And he put, and Tim was mad because I told him, why don't you come home? Because he's working. Job. It's not like he ever gives me any money or rent or anything, but you know, I know he just started back working recently. But with that said, I guess he's like, "Why don't you do this, this, and that?" I'm like, "You have unlimited energy, like a like a pup, like a puppy dog or kitten." And you and this other girl I know, she wants to come up here and do nonstop. Now we're actually going to host a um, Happy New Year's get together. We're planning. To to do it. In fact, Circle's Edge is hosting a Thanksgiving Day luncheon for people who are homebound or, you know, for example, people who have no family up here or they don't feel like driving or traveling three billion hours to their family because this travel days are Thanksgiving Eve is the worst day to travel in the whole year. And, you know, I know it's the last time I went to DC. Every time I go to DC, my friends, I have to stay at her place, which is nice because my cousins and them don't be like letting me, you know, I don't really even ask to stay there. I had to stay with my one cousin one year and she was like, oh, my, she had a roommate or some excuse and this and that because she took over Granny's house. And when, normally I would stay at Granny, but since Granny passed away, oh my God. And my, uh, the aunt that, that sounded and looked like me passed away and all these other ones, you know, um, now, there's not too many places to stay, and um, and you don't if you don't have a car on top of that, you know, D.C. and New York have subways, but just like New York subways now are like the cesspool of hell and a dumpster fire and a purge, D.C. subways are fine, but they're not 24-7, and if you live out in the suburbs, it doesn't matter. That's one thing about New York. I think the subways go most places, except in Queens. All of Maryland, Virginia, and lots in some parts of DC, or several parts of DC, is like uh, is like Queens. I mean, most places in New York, you could walk to the subway. It's like four. The subway's less than like a half a mile away. It's like a thirty, like you know, fifteen minutes. You're at the subway, ten to fifteen minutes. But when you get to Queens. It's like three, four, you know, you're going to be walking for like a mile or at least a half a mile to get to the subway. You got to take a bus somewhere. So Queens and I guess Long Island is like the, the, um, the suburbs or something. Oh, look at this. How hard this is for the stupid knife. Oh, my God. I really need to call the knife doctor because this, there's this guy that does house calls and he will literally sharpen your knives in his van. And that goes to the plumber guy, the same one who did a no call, no show when I, when I needed my drain snaked and the same one I paid a thousand dollars to. Um, so I knew he wasn't gonna show up but he claimed, oh, I'll show up today around three to show Billy what to do um, for this and that. Now, Billy was actually working and I did leave Billy a mess but it didn't even matter because he ain't show up anyway. So what's the point? <sighs> Okay, so that's open. So now I'll add some seasons and garlic and call it a day. Oh. <laughs> And actually, I could add some of this pepperoncino and my garlic, which is the best way to get the garlic so you don't have to um, eat too much. Well, I'm gonna add And 
I learned a trick from some show where you put the turkey breast upside down because the turkey's breast is the, the driest part and the legs and thighs are the moistest. So if you put the breast upside down so it's bathing in the juices and everything, then you don't have to worry about, um, that's more than enough, way more than enough, worry about anything of drying out. Not to mention, of course, I'll wrap it and everything with about a hundred layers of foil. So now I'm gonna season everything. I'll use this one because it's a lot of shaking going, be a whole lot of shaking going on. Oh, hold on, I didn't even season, uh, oil the, um, Oh my God. Here's some cumin. That was cayenne. Hot like cayenne. Cayenne, this is cumin. I might as well just use the rest of this on this turkey. There ain't much left, is it? Right? Bye bye. Thank you. You did your service. Well done. Get a faithful cumin powder. Next will be sage, paprika, and turmeric. So this is paprika. And of course, I wrote it my chicken scratch. Paprika, turmeric, which I love on almost everything. And I like turmeric root in my teas because it's like ginger, it's like ginger's cousin. And I like turmeric powder and all my savory stuff. Then, <sighs> Throw some, oh. <laughs> now throw some of this, uh, ooh, yeah. I like this piggy should open up stuff. Throw some of these things, this garlic juice. And which, um, as you can see, I used it and I peeled it. I had a, it was a big jar, big jug. And then of course, I guess I'm gonna have to massage it and then flip it over and probably do similar. Ugh. Now, Yes, I may need to add a few bits more of oil. And then I'm gonna flip it over. And this is delicious olive oil. I need to go back to the Honest Weight Food Co-op and the place to get some more of this. Okay, yikes. Oh my goodness, oh my gracious. I forgot to add some salt. So. I added everything but salt. Almost gonna be like some people who don't have seasonings at all. So here's the salt, dirty as hell and ever. Oh, there you go, open it this side. There you go. <sighs> so. Now I'm gonna add some of this gravy to it. And flip it over.
Yeah. Shit, I can almost have this whole jar. Now, I'm gonna need two hands to flip this bird over. Yikes. Really be doing some this piggy sound effects now. Oh, not so much. Yikes. I was able to do it without so many piggy sounds. Thank you, Turkey, for all your existence and loveliness. Thank you. Now, I guess I got to season the back. I guess I got to season the backside now. Yes. While I'm doing it, I might as well wash these few knives I have in the sink. The bird was 13 and a half pounds. So that's awesome, you know, that they gave us the bird, they gave us some onions, they gave us, they gave us the bird, some onions, some potatoes, two things of gravy. Bird, the onion, two things of gravy, um, some cranberry sauce, corn. And then by mistake, I ordered some stuff from Walmart, including a refrigerator light bulb replacement. And they gave me some um, beef liver, which I don't like beef liver at all. I'm not even a big beef eater. I eat fish and fowl. I eat chicken and turkey, not like other games. So, and fowl, like I, I eat fish, like, practically every type of fish. I'm not into octopus because that's rubbery. But outside some rubbery as octopus, I like everything else. So now, time to season this side. And I see this is being held up, so. Okay, okay let's close this out, yikes. I'm gonna have to clean all of these because you know, you don't want to cross contaminate. And of course, being that I forgot to, uh, at least that's not getting cross contamination because, uh, so I'll show you, oh, hold on, what happened? Whatever. after round two but anyway since it's not being held up I guess I was able to successfully well, cross it over the more uh, cayenne That was being held up. You know, I don't care. Anyway. I did the cayenne. And now here's the idea. I'm gonna pour this in here. Put this up. And throw some of that in there. Pop some of those up. Add some water. Mix it up. Because the um pepperoncino gives it a nice uh, vinegar, blah blah, you know, vinegar thingy. The fact 
I add some of these in here. I chop some of them up now and oh. no idea. But anyway, as I do that and think about the Raj Diaz, um, like I said, the guy finally, the one that knows Pastor, finally, um, he not finally, it was Veterans Day. It was his birthday, I guess. So he sent his brother, uh, the music guy, and the Omar Epps looking Jamaican dude, or wherever he was from, to finally do the flooring and to frame the floor out. And they did that in a few hours and cleaned it out and everything. So they did that finally, but then, um, and he did replace the door. So, oh my God, I'm about to put it in there without even wrapping it. So. Ouch. I'm pretty good at this. So this will look like the dollars to you. So it's about as thick as a strand of hair. It's thin and flimsy and so for Luckily, I don't use foil that much. And when I do use it, um, I don't know, heating a few things up or wrapping stuff up or whatever. I use three pieces of foil. Wrap the turkey. And I'm gonna put it in there for like 300 degrees. Let me put it in here first. Oh, how are you doing? Why would he turn on both of them knowing I gotta take off this damn thing? You idiot. Yikes. That's not. I'm glad I turned it off because look at all that. It didn't even. Okay. So. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna turn it on for, uh, I have a confection oven too. But anyway, bake and roast 300. And the cooking time, like five to six hours. So it's now 9 p.m. So around 3 a.m., around two or three in the morning, it should be done. And with that, like I was saying with the um, the guy, I'm about to clean this up afterwards. <laughs> Hello, silly cat. Here's Lady Monkey Man being silly. Mm. Well, like I was saying, with um, making a big mess that I did. <sighs> Look at me, I need to hear in the mess. I figured I call. I looked at his license, so he is officially registered and certified. So that is um, licensed and bonded or whatever. So I guess I could always file a claim with his insurance because he's licensed and he has some insurance. And if I, you know, so just I know the bar association. If you have a pissy lawyer, or if you want to do malpractice, but you have like the New York Medical Board or the New York Bar or whatever. Every other state has their own bar. So I had to hunt it down to get the um, license for the people. For the, I just looked at his thing and it's New York State, blah, blah, some department and a phone number. They told me, send the email. Maybe he could do it because the way the lady was like, well, sorry, that's your problem. He's done all of his stuff to confirm he's a licensed and bonded plumber. But if he's a shitty customer, you know, customer service, that's between you and him, and, you know, small claims court, which is whatever. Um, I'm just trying to get him to, and he didn't even do the permit. He lied and said he filed the permit. Of course, I immediately called the, um, the, code, the code office and they said they don't have no paperwork. So I'm gonna see if I can get him to meet me because, and then Billy, he could do all the piping, the plumbing from inside the basement, turn off the first floor and connect the plumbing from the basement to, and he could probably even put it through the cellar door, but then to go from the cellar door into the garage, 
uh, for the water line because we bought the water line to connect from the basement into the cellar door. So this man needs to just show up and connect it from the cellar door into the garage and collect the drain line from the garage through the cellar door into the uh, basement and then connect it to the drain. So, I mean, I should be like, look, look meet me, you know, go to Home Depot and get all the tools you need to, um, in fact, that's what I'm gonna send him an email now. Um, I'm gonna send him an email since he's bullshit. He never wants to answer the call. Well, in fact, I should CC the email with this garage. Hi, Manny, comma. I guess today was quite busy as Billy had a work as well, period. If you could come over, I don't know, tomorrow is probably not the best day, but it'll be nice if maybe you could come over. I don't know how long it takes for you to connect the drain line from the sewer line in the basement into the bill code into the garage and then just to connect the water line from the garage into the uh, bill code door cellar area and then Billy can connect the cellar connect everything else from the cellar into the resident the water line I just need you to connect the water line from the garage into the cellar and connect the drain line from the main sewer line out into the uh, cellar. I mean, so I'm sure that, I don't know, take a few hours. Tomorrow, I don't know how long it'll, you'll be available, probably not much. So I was hoping I could meet up with you before Thanksgiving because um, I know you'll be busy Thanksgiving, you know, probably tomorrow. And of course, I'm assuming Friday and Saturday won't be available either. But if you can maybe swing past tomorrow morning, I don't know, then just to connect the um, water line into the, um, you know, just to connect the water line from the garage into the bill code door. Also, code claims they still don't have your permit paperwork. Um, they, I gave them the address, said they don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, all right, bye. Now, to be honest, I probably shouldn't say anything about code for until he shows up. Because theoretically, maybe you don't need to really pull up. They say you're supposed to pull a code, even when you put a tool shed in the back. I'm like, why do you need to put a code permit for a tool shed? You're not digging. You're not adding in additions. You're not building a roof, a second floor. You're not building a basement. You're not adding an addition to the back of your house. You're just putting a, a giant tool. Oh, do you need a permit for a swing set and a sliding board set? I mean, why do you need a permit for this stupidness? But they're like, oh, you need a permit for that, whatever that's about. So I don't know um, why you need a permit for any of those things, which is kind of stupid. But uh, sitting, since I'm sitting here, yeah, so I don't know why you would need a permit for that. With that said, um, I'm going to send him this email tonight, probably edit a little bit and take the permit part out because um, I paid him a grand. So that should be more than enough money to connect the sewer line from the main sewer out into the garage through the bill code door and whatever that open. And then once he does that, then Billy can come back and connect the water line. So once he, all he needs to do is make a path from the sewer line out into the road to through the back of the basement, through the bill code door, cellar door, cellar area, into the garage, however he needs to do that. And then once, whatever opening he makes to go from the cellar door into the garage, Billy can tap into that and put the uh, water line from there into the, you know, put a turn off valve inside the garage and then stick the water line out through that same opening that he makes and then put it into and put it through the bill code door, make add another shutoff valve in the basement. So you have two shutoff valves, and then connect it into the first floor water line. We already got the water lines. We just don't have the shutoff valves. So let me tell them that. I'm gonna rephrase this. Hi, Manny. Vice Bill. Let me see, I'm gonna rephrase that. Of course, there's no. Eh. 
and solely get connect the sewer line from the main sewer pipe going out through the back of the basement, through the cellar, Vilco door area, up into the garage. And then whatever, and then Billy can just follow the same path to connect the water line from there and through the basement up into the uh, main water. So, I mean, if you could do that, that'll be very ideal and nice. I'm assuming it shouldn't take no more than a few hours to pop a hole with a drill, however you do, to the garage and to connect it through the bill code door and the whatever sheetrock stuff, you know, just to connect it. And I mean, I know you need special pipe cutters to connect it into the um, sewer line. You need a professional to do that versus just shutting out the first floor and getting some, um, uh, you know, some V, you know, extension, you know, T or something and popping it in there and connecting it to the, through the same path. So ideally, if you could do the sewer line, you know, I don't know how many hours it's, I'm assuming it shouldn't take more than a few hours to connect this new sewer line from the main drain out into into the, um, what do you call it? The garage tomorrow, that'd be ideal. Anyway, thank you. I think that's better. Don't even mention code work or anything or water line. Just do the garage and sewer and then Billy can connect the water the same way. Anyway, let's see what bullshit activities happen next. Cause I mean, at least and I could see why they didn't fill in a frame the little pop out because Paul was saying you need to drill a hole through the floor and through, I guess, go into the floor of the garage and then snake or worm your way through the Florida garage into the bill code door and then just go down from there and call it a day. Uh, he could tell Billy how to do that or I could record him explaining it to me and Billy and then Billy can follow his orders. But uh, the sewer line is a bit more advanced. Uh, so I wish, hopefully he'll show up tomorrow. But anyway, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm sure you'll, no one probably going to see it anytime now I'm to them. But anyway, it's, thanks, it's Tuesday before Thanksgiving and I'm cooking the turkey. It's finally up to 300. You probably heard it go beep, beep, beep. So it's at 300 degrees. So it's 9, 15, 19, 19, 19, 19. So around two in the morning at 300 degrees. I think I should put it at 350 at first. For the first hour, I'll put it at 350 degrees. And then after the first hour at 10 o'clock, I'll move it down to 300 until like two in the morning, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. And that way we'll have turkey. Seem like we get the turkey and we eat the turkey before Thanksgiving, but that's all right. Because Tim, I'm sure, is working Thanksgiving. Yeah, he works there Thanksgiving. But I'll be at the Circle's Edge Thanksgiving luncheon, and I'll probably be having this as well as, um, I don't know, maybe I can make another mac and cheese casserole with the Instapot. I mean, we have been this and mac and cheese casserole and the vegetables. Like Sister Ola made a very yummy version of vegetable stir fry level uh, stuffing. So we'll see. Anyway, bye.